This video was brought to you by Marcus Biel, Elbil Mac, a battery planner, stolen by Camp Power and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now in the garage and here we have Opel Astra E station wagon. What is called sports tourer. So we're going to do 1000 km challenge. Now this is the new drivetrain from Stellantis. It has 156 horsepower and it has a 54 kilowatt hour battery and it charges at 100 kilowatt. Now this is probably one of the slowest Car, uh, car out there versus Tesla or MEV platform or, or the, the Korean cars. So the fastest time I have with the Atlantic car is uh, one, uh, 10 hours and 40 minutes. That was the Citroen EC4X. So now it's winter, it's going to be wet some places. So can we at least do it within 11 hours? Let's see. All right, so I have prepared now. In the garage, we have 9.3 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I have some dehumidifiers in here and I have some fans and stuff. So I'm trying to then dry out the air inside. And I can show you also, since some people don't know, I have more dehumidifiers here. I have some more fans over here. Yeah, I have my whole collection of Ryobio here also. Ryobi, sorry. And I even have a vacuum cleaner here. This is, uh, they call it Grovstavsuge. It's, it's the vacuum cleaner that can also suck water. But anyway, so we are plugged in now and this is a bit strange because um, if we look here, uh, we are at 99%. It took forever to top up from 98 to yeah, 99%. Um, the battery is at 12 degrees Celsius, but see, it's charging at only 1.6 kilowatt. Huh? That is unbelievably slow. Most other cars with similar battery sizes will be charging at at least 5 kilowatt towards the end here, <laughs> not 1.6 kilowatt, right? So uh, unfortunately, we cannot top it back to 100%, but it's good enough. We're gonna go to Strömstad. That's only 172 kilometers away. Yeah, according to EC, we're pulling 2.6 kilowatt only. Okay, whatever. Let's start now in one minute. Go, go. We have been driving for about an hour. We just passed Sulle now, uh, you see here, yeah. So um, yeah, we're down to 49% battery. I don't know if this is uh, linear or not. But uh, yeah, and we have done 116 kilometers. So it seems like we can go around 200 kilometers on a single charge at these speeds, of course. And with uh, headwind and wet roads, uh, we still don't have crazy high consumption. So this car seems to be quite efficient. Yeah, this is the, the advantage of having a station wagon rather than a, an SUV crossover, right? So uh, yeah, I'm. I still haven't decided where to stop. I have navigated to uh, Ionity Strömstad, that's 53 kilometers away. This car does not tell you how many percent you will arrive with or anything like that. So, yeah, um, okay, let's uh, enjoy the wet roads. But uh, it's wet now for just one hour or around uh, 10, 15 percent of the route, and then it should be dry soon. And the battery has heated up to 19 degrees Celsius. We started with uh, 12, wasn't it? So uh, I wonder if we need around 25 degrees to hit the maximum speed. But we still have to drive around, so it's slowly heating up. But also this car has no preheating before fast charging. And I don't even know if it has any heat scavenging or you know, high tech like that. We are now at Strömstad. Yeah, we had to bail out here. I think that is the best solution. I could go to Tarnum, which is around 20, 25 kilometers down the road, but uh, that is a slight longer detour from the main road. This is literally just a pit stop here. You see, Autobahn is there, exit, zoop, come over here, and then we are charging here, yeah. So here you see the Astra, I like the red color. Yeah, and also the, the Opel front. So yeah, we came here with 24 degrees uh, in the battery and 21%. Uh, so, oh, look at this, oh yeah. We're taking maximum speed now. So we only need to top up maybe five, 10 minutes so we can reach uh, Speculard. So yeah, here you see, it is a station. Man, it's doing that French thing, man. Where it just, if I'm just around the car, it would just lock, unlock like a freaking mofo. Okay, let me get inside. Let's check out now the battery status. So this is what you get here. It's the 50, what is it again? 54 kilowatt hour battery. And yeah. yeah. As long as the ignition is off, then you don't see any status here. But this is also a little bit clumsy. If I do, if I press the brake here, like this. Oh yeah, okay, now it might work. But for driving, you have to press and hold it for two seconds for it to be ready. But okay, 
Now we can see that, oh yeah, look at this, 100 kilowatt. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay, good, good, good. Wait, wait, I have to hurry. Yeah, here you see 26 degrees Celsius. I was told that uh, the Stellantis car, they have heat scavenging, they have alien technology. It can scavenge heat from the motor to feed the battery at least. All right, next stop is going to be 124 kilometers away. That is speculated, including the detour. Um, GOM here seems to be a bit optimistic. Uh, at 68%, two, no, 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 it means that at 100% you get 350 kilometers of range. Ain't gonna happen. So anyway, uh, let's check outside. How long did we charge? Oh, okay, 19 minutes to go from 20% uh, to 70%, but this is a tiny battery. All right, let's go. All right, we're back on the road. And uh, over here, it seems like it's going to be dry soon. That's good. But uh, yeah, the headlights here seems to be okay. I need to do a proper headlight test also, but we have matrix lights. So just like before, uh, there's matrix lights, but uh, I read in the press release that uh, there might be some improvement in the matrix lights. So let me show you, this is headlight off and then on. So it's a bit weird, I have to do it the French way, which is that I have to push, pull the stock towards me. Most cars, you will have to, you pull the stock away from you to enable high beam and then towards you to disable it. But the French cars, yeah, like I've owned in the past, uh, you know, I used to own, actually my first car was a Renault 5, <laughs> a 90, 1985 model. No, in 1986, I think it was, yeah, 1.4 liter. <laughs> but there also, I have, from what I remember, I had to push the stock towards me. And we have, you will hear this click click sound even. So you see here, this is high beam on, or auto high beam or whatever matrix and then off and then on so you see once it turns on it everything fires on first and then it switches off uh, the left side maybe it detects that we are on the motorway so it doesn't light up the left side let me see there then it turned off for the oncoming truck we are now at speculate 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 get it wow look at this 105 kilo huh is this car supposed to charge that fast even what Okay, that's good. The battery is nice and warm. I hope we don't wrap it, Kate. <laughs> okay, anyway, next stop is going to be Vibe. This is this is nice. Um, okay, so it doesn't show me how many percent I will arrive with, but it shows me that I will run out of the juice there. <laughs> but the car is still being very optimistic on the range and estimates. But look, okay, it's nine, but it was eight degrees Celsius. It was showing eight degrees Celsius when I arrived at least. Now it's probably messed up by the cooling. But, huh, really? Yeah, it is actually nice and warm. Well, actually, is this eight degrees? Okay, but this is the heat wave I heard about this weekend. Yeah, we have some nice warm winds from the south. So for once, we don't have to deal with extreme cold weather. So, um, yeah, um, not much to report here at Speckerud. Um Yeah, we have Circle K. They are working on chargers. I'm, I'm pretty sure these are chargers. Uh, there was a sign here that blew off, I think, blew down. Yeah, there's supposed to be some sign here saying that there will be some chargers coming up. But here you see the foundation for chargers. And then eventually there will be... Wait, this is not large enough for trucks. Yeah, I think trucks are not welcome here. Probably just for passenger cars. So it's a nice upgrade. Uh, when it comes to Circle K, it seems like there is some not Luca. The dude there cannot enter the gas station. I can just check, by the way. Will, will they allow him to enter or not? But whatever, it's fine. Um, I don't have to stop here. I mean, oh no, you can enter. Okay, okay, that's fine. But um, I will just uh, wait until we get over to uh, Weilbike then. But let's check it out now. The Ionity. This is the old uh, Ionity chargers, Tritium. Yeah, nowadays, you oh, okay, okay. We didn't get that speed for too long. Now we're down to 95 kilowatt. <sighs> this is the reality for Stellantis cars, is that you, <laughs> You don't charge that fast compared to, for example, uh, MEB cars. They will be pumping in 150 kilowatt, at least 130 kilowatt. Polestar also, Tesla also. Well, okay, some of the Chinese cars might be charging even slower than this Stellantis car. Okay, we're almost good to go. So it's going to be a little bit over 20 minutes before we uh, uh, disconnect. I will go for 65%. But yeah, so this car might not have the best charging speed but at least it was able to maintain um, 
85 kilowatt for the longest time until it starts throttling a little bit now. So yeah, we're gonna go for 65% this time. All right, we're back on the road and uh, you see here, previously we had, uh, uh, from Strömstad, I think we had 39 degrees Celsius. Some guy in live stream claimed that. This time we actually ended up with 44 degrees and now it starts cooling down. But um, yeah, you know, this car doesn't have any preheating before fast charging, but it seems like as long as you have more than 20 degrees Celsius in the battery and you just hammer it like I do, then uh, we won't cold it and there is no preheating needed. <laughs> we are now at wild by getting 104 kilowatt. Nice. Battery is at 33 degrees Celsius. This time I did not run the heater. Uh, what else is it? Yeah, we are right here with 12%. And now we're already at 17%. Wow, it goes fast with a small battery, but is it really nine degrees Celsius outside, huh? That is, uh, Canadians would be wearing shorts if it was nine degrees Celsius. Wow. It's like we go from the Siberian winter to the Morocco winter. <laughs> so yeah, we're now back here. Uh, not much to show you guys. Um, everything is closed here at night. So, um, yeah, I was just, what the heck, man? Freaking Volvo with lead bar. Oh, okay, anyway, uh, I will do a, um, a quick uh, pit stop here. And I have to expect that the, the charging stop will be around. Well, look at this, the percent goes up so quickly now. Even after two minutes, we went from 12% to 20%. So yeah, it means that I have to be here for another 15 minutes only. Well, let's see. We have 44 degrees Celsius in the battery here. No, no, no. I took a, I think I took a screenshot by accident. Okay, whatever. There, this bit. <laughs> but let's check now. Do I have full power? Look here. Oh, let me see. Oh, 116, 128 kilowatt. Oh, wait, wait. Now, oh, okay. That was a little bit of restricted uh, power because of uh, traction control kicking in. But yeah. It seems like we have maximum power even at 44 degrees Celsius. So that's good. However, uh, it's not that powerful. <laughs> so maybe the battery is not the limitation here. We are now on the concrete surface around Falkenbike. And yeah, you can hear that it is a bit loud here. So especially the right lane is rough because all the trucks have been hammering down the road. So I can change the left lane, you will hear a quite big difference. Yeah, you see, less, way less rumbling. So we have Continental Viking Contact 7 tires. They are softer and they are then absorbing the rumbling better than summer tires. Summer tires will be a lot uh, louder, but uh, uh, weird dimension, 225, 45, 18. So uh, somewhat uh, skinny tires. Hmm. Yeah, normally I don't have that skinny tires. Like even Model 3 has 235 with on the tires and then most cars I test nowadays they have at least 245 or wider so yeah here again listen to the difference yeah it becomes really uh, quiet on this lane so I mean how relevant is this uh, surface um, <clears throat> at least in the Nordic countries then um, asphalt, uh, asphalt is most common and, uh, and concrete is not that common but however, in the rest of Europe, especially Germany, uh, concrete is uh, well somewhat common because concrete is, is more durable, so they tend to use that on busy roads. And also, I was told that this surface over here on the right lane, like this, here, yeah, is actually common in Germany. We are now at Supercharger Melbistron. You see, we are charging now, getting 90 kilo. Okay, yeah, it drops uh, as expected. But but but, um, my plan was to drive to the turnaround point and then come back here. Well, I have to bail out because the consumption was higher than expected. I was guessing 270. Okay, let me let me show you here. Uh, let me see. This is a total consumption for the challenge. You see. Um, okay, I was thinking, oh, okay, it's, it might be 270. Well, I was totally wrong because we consume 309 watt hour per kilometer. 
So um, yeah, um, we just have to charge a little bit more over here and then hopefully we can get back to fire bike. But this is the reality. With small battery, then you, you have only around 90 kilometers of range. Unless you want to charge to 90%, whatever, then you can have a little bit over 100 kilometers of range. Yeah. This is not my favorite place to stop because there's nothing to do here. You see, we have superchargers here. Uh, and then everything is closed, at least at night when I drive. But for no more normal people, you guys probably don't care if you charge here. Um, yeah, charge here because then McDonald's and stuff will be open, right? And you know the PSA car or the Stellantis cars, they used to have the charge port on the left side with the right side, not the right side with the wrong side. So for some reason, they have now moved the charge port to the right side. And then you see, uh, how do I have to park? Well, I have to park like this. Yeah. So I can reach the cable there. And also, I well, I could plug in on the wrong side, but uh, for practical reason, uh, I want to know the stall number, you know? Um, for that's You have to input the stall number in the app to start charging. So uh, if I want to use this stall, I then have to poke over here and like, oh, that's 4B. Okay, okay, let's start 4B. That's why I tend to use the wrong stall, yeah. But if the charge port will be left side, then no problem. Okay, we went to the turnaround point and now we are back at the Melbistron. And you know, when I bail out, I had 14% left and I've calculated that I wouldn't make it. And you see, we are, we, okay, we charged to 80%. We are now 66, so we spent 14% on the loop. So that means that we would have been back here with 0%. That is cutting it a bit close. Yeah, so now we just have to hammer it in the 120 zone and consumption is 292 and it's gonna go up. Um, we are now at the gas station. Um, the time was 5.58 when I exited. I'm getting really tired. Uh, I just need to take a nap for safety. Uh, I tend to do this. It's actually also, yeah, we, we just have to record all the data uh, once we exit and then let me see what. Uh, can we not park here or one hour it says okay yeah let's just park yeah we have one hour but we're not gonna park in one hour yeah there's a parking time limit all right uh let me see how is this again uh the seats they have okay yeah they have electric adjustment yeah <laughs> you have electric adjustment on the recline but you have manual adjustment for forward and back so uh, as usual i will use the the storm bike pillow but there is one thing i need to highlight with this car the, actually all the stellantis cars is that if you're stationary like this for after 15 minutes it will shut down the heater and then eventually there will be a battery a red battery icon and you see here right now obd volt is 13.3 once it goes into that resting state or whatever you call it, then the 12 volt battery is being discharged and it is not charged. And you will see that this voltage will suddenly drop. I've seen it as low as 10.7 volts. So I, I set the clock. I tried to sleep now for 15 minutes and then I had to wake up so the car doesn't die. <laughs> Shit. But, oh, I, I mean, I try to stay awake, but uh, the daddy life is hard, man. Uh, just constant baby stuff or toddler stuff, and I, I don't get enough sleep. And also remember that I have um, a pregnant wife. She's uh, pregnant now for around six or seven months. So, yeah, let's try to get some sleep. Wait, it, it hasn't been 15 minutes yet. Uh, we've been camped here for only 10 minutes, and I heard it. And you see, it doesn't say ready. And then it says press brake. Well, can okay, you see it? It's a bit bright. So it says press press brake and start. And you can see that the OBD volt was 13 something. It tw dropped to 12. But um, I think right now it's supposed to cut off the heater. I can feel there's some leftover heat coming out. This is probably just uh, the heat in the in the coolant system. But I need to point at something else here, uh, which is that I tried to get some sleep. Right. Um, I just use this to just cover my eyes a bit, but uh, I noticed that the car, uh, the seat cannot recline that much. A bit hard to show you, but it's like sitting in a BMW i3. It doesn't recline further than this. 
it should be okay, but uh, most other cars I test they can recline a little bit more. So yeah, let's see. Uh, wh what the heck do I do now? I have to. I have to press brake, and then you can't just press brake and start like this. No, no, no. That that would be too easy. You see, you have to press and hold there, and then when it says ready, then heater is on now. You see the OBD volt drop a bit, then it goes up. And then, I'm not sure if it goes higher than that. Okay, now we get heater. <laughs> then when it's ready in here, yeah. Uh oh, time to wakey wakey. You had a five minute nap, 10, uh, 10 minute nap. And uh, now we see this heater is off and the 12 volt is being discharged. Uh, okay, let's stop it. Okay, and now let me show you what happens now. If I just press the brake, look here, look here. Bloop, voltage is being charged. I wonder if I stay there too long, maybe. Too, uh, there, <laughs> maybe I, I, I will actually discharge the 12 volt battery. And then suddenly uh, the 12 volt battery just dies. Mm. Oh man, I think I stayed here uh, a little bit over an hour total and uh, uh, this car is not good at napping. Uh, you get constantly interrupted because you cannot he keep the heater on. Uh, at least I'm also worried that I will discharge the 12 volt. So, oh man. But at least um, we pull out a little bit before six. So we stay there for, yeah, we can just count it as one hour and 15 minutes. And the battery has discharged slightly and it's also cooled down slightly, but it shouldn't matter. So let's go. Oh, it's 7.15 now and uh, the early birds are out early now. Shit, the left lane huggers, what? Uh, we have a little bit of left, uh, sorry, a little bit of tailwind at least. That's good for consumption, but man. People, uh, how long are you gonna block the left lane? This is why I drive at night to avoid this shit. Uh, man. Oh, what the heck? I mean, I know it's Sunday and everything, but. Why is a freaking Volvo camp in the left lane? Uh, do I undertake the Volvo? Or do I move over to the right lane and flash? Oh, that, now he moves over. Okay, well, yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, shit, man. At least there is some lane discipline over here, right? <laughs> Unlike in Norway. Oh, he's a Dane. Holy shit, man. Are you going to Norway? We are now at Weilberg, we arrived at 14%. Oh, which means that charging to 80% was a bit overkill. Uh, okay, whatever, but uh, yeah, we are getting maximum speed. The battery is still warm enough. So, oh yeah, no, next stop is going to be Speculot. Yeah, we just have to charge here, uh, not too long, but um, man, it is bright outside, you see. Oh, which is good for me staying awake, but that stop I had, man. I mean, I stopped for over an hour, but you know, normally when I can, when I take a nap in other cars, where you have maybe seats that is more comfortable, reclines more, and then you can just keep the car running for whatever, like especially Tesla or something. Um, then uh, normally after napping for an hour, then I feel quite refreshed. Now. I feel like I didn't, didn't really get any sleep <laughs> or maybe effectively I got only half an hour nap after over one hour staying still there. Uh, so yeah, the problem is that we're getting more traffic now. There's more cars on the road, more people charging. So I feel like I just have to get the heck back to Oslo. No wait, yes same. Yeah, uh, okay. But also now I run the heater and it doesn't seem to overheat the battery. So at least that's good. Yeah, you see, oh, look at that. Wait, huh? Now we're getting 106 kilowatt for longer. Wait, does it mean that previously, or yesterday, or previously, when it throttled to 95 kilowatt, the battery was actually overheating? Hmm, so maybe that one hour nap we had was actually an advantage. <laughs> Well, we're now passing by uh, Göteborg. It's uh, eight, almost 8.30 in the morning now, Sunday morning. Uh, traffic uh, 
is picking up. There is lots of Danes going north. I think they're going to Norway. Why else would they pass through Sweden, right? <laughs> but okay, so um, yeah, nice weather. Well, it, it is still nine degrees Celsius outside. That is remarkably warm for a, uh, an early March. Yeah, normally it would be more like uh, two, three degrees, maybe no more than five degrees Celsius. All right, we are finally at Speculate, 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 Speculate. <laughs> okay, so now we can see the car more in daylight. Huh? I mean, it's a station wagon, but it is kind of small. Only 4.6 meters long. Well, 4.64 meters. So, yeah, I had some handshake problems over there. Actually, the plug didn't connect properly on the top. And then when I held it against the... the uh, well, just push it more up, then it... Hand, the handshake went through it started charging but when I let go the top went a little bit off and then the charging stopped so I had to deduct two minutes but then we are charging on this side so we came at five percent I expected to arrive at ten percent this is why I have a ten percent margin when I test these tiny batteries but look at this it goes quite schnell at the bottom at least oh yeah so now I can show you also the the construction site here so soon enough, we will have uh, extra chargers here, double the capacity, because this speculate site here actually tends to be a bit busy during holiday season or, yeah, weekends even. Oh, this is interesting. I went to the restroom, uh, came back, and you see that we've been charging for 21 minutes. Normally, we would be done by now. But previously, you will see that at 60%, we would get 75 kilowatt, maybe even faster, I don't remember, uh, roughly 75 kilowatt. It would actually go quite flat until around 70%. So what the heck is going on now? Well, I can show you what happened. Remember that we arrived at 5%, and in general, when you go deep, you build up more heat in the battery. And when you start charging, you also build up more heat in the battery. So the battery is actually rapid gating. Look at that, 49 degrees Celsius. The car was off. I was not in the car. It was locked down, not preheating or running any heater. And now we're taking only 45 kilowatt hour per hour. Huh. So note the self next time, or I mean, when I estimate uh, how much juice I need, I need to avoid getting down to 5%. I should maybe try to get to 10% on the next stop. <laughs> Huh, interesting. Okay, that was a 31 minute charging stop huh? to 75%. On previous run, we would probably need maybe 25 minutes only. So, um, yeah, that was significantly slower because the battery was overheating. It's strange, right? Because uh, on the previous run, we did not get any overheating. So, um, we will see now, we still have to charge two more times. And so this is why it matters to do 1,000 kilometer challenge, because the problem didn't occur until after 700 kilometers. Then the, the conditions were uh, right that it overheated. But you see, it's only eight degrees Celsius. Can you imagine if it's 25 degrees Celsius outside? How much overheating will we get then? Hmm. And then, okay, now we are on the, uh, the, the the detour stretch, uh, you know, the motorway is uh, kaput between uh, yeah, on, on around standing soon. So um, I heard in the news that uh, it's going to be fixed this year by the by, I don't know uh, Q3, Q4 this year. So um, we are now Strömstad, and normally if I would live in Oslo, this would be the last turning stop. But because we have a, I wouldn't say a short range car, but not a long range car, then we have to. Oh, 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 oh I just noticed something. I'm too lazy to walk over there, but look. Yeah, they finally upgraded. Man, they, they, they used to have 50 kilowatt there for the longest time. Now they have a Delta charger. Yeah, all right, that's good. But okay, so let's check out now. Is the car going to rapid gate this time? No, but it already locked it. This, it tends to lock the car even when I'm nearby. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, as always, the car scanner is frozen until we fire up the car. Then it will update. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. We get the speed now. For now. But it seems like this needs to be at over 45 degrees before we rapid gate. All right, we're good to go. We have 51%. I calculated we need only 45% uh, to reach Rigge. Yeah, I've been sticking with Ionity in the past now, but they are very convenient and also not too expensive. But look here. 
This time, we have 43 degrees in the battery and we're taking 80 kilowatt. I wonder what the heck happened at Speculoid. <laughs> there is no rapid gate here this time. And also, yeah, in case you guys don't know, we have active cooling, of course. Well, we're back in Norway now and over here is raining. Mm. Yeah, and also, man, um, just because this car took some time and I started late and I had to nap, then it is 11 now on a Sunday morning. Plus that, there seems to be some traffic from uh, Denmark and, uh, and Sweden here, so yeah, there's a little bit more traffic than usual, man. So, yeah, anyway, uh, not much to report. <laughs> yeah, I use Rainex by the way, I use Rainex since yesterday, so that if it's raining, uh, I don't have to use the windscreen wiper and uh, it just bounces off. So, it's more for convenience, really, because if it's raining really hard, then no problem, I have full vision. And then, okay, uh, with all the deductions and the nap and whatever we had towards the start time, uh, just to make things simple, I kept track of everything. You take the current time now, 11.03, minus one hour, and that is the 1,000 kilometer time. That means that we have already passed the 10 hour mark, and we are 857 kilometers. But this car underreports distance by 1.7%, so we have to go to 983 kilometers, so that's still over 100 more kilometers. Uh oh, and we have to charge one more time. Uh oh, okay, let's hammer it. We are now at Ionity. There is some activity over here. Yeah, plenty of cars charging, but they're still available. Wait, no, that one is kaput. Oh, okay. Uh, but even if these were not available, I can take supercharger, I can take soccer case chargers. There's also some. Uh, camp power over there, but okay. Anyway, so yeah, since this car doesn't tell me how many, re, it, oh, it tells me that I need to recharge to get there. Uh, no, I don't care about that. But okay, we have 102 kilometers. I just navigated to Yesem Stushan, but we had to drive another 102 kilometers before before we are home. So I will show you how easy it is to calculate by hand uh, how many percent you need. So first we look here at uh, the uh, the past leg. Okay, we averaged 313 watt hour per kilometer. Uh, it is likely that it's going to be less now because we have to drive to Oslo. So let's say 290 watt hour per kilometer. Okay, and then you take 102 kilometer times 290 watt hour per kilometer. This is in watt hour divided by 51 kilowatt hour, which I believe we have now a uh, net capacity. And you see, oh, oh shit, okay, it was 58. I bumped into some number here, but so we need to spend 58 percent. So it means that if we go for roughly 65 percent, then we should be good. And then, oh, nice, you see, every time now we get 105 kilowatt hour per hour, and then it drops a little bit. All right, this is it, the final run. And man, I've seen so many foreign uh, EVs now, especially the Danes and the, and the Swedes, it's not using electric cars now, ooh. But uh, yeah, oh shit, um, it's almost noon now, we hit traffic and it's raining outside, which means that people will be camping the left lane, going dog slow. Uh, and there is no day lane discipline, uh, so, uh, yeah, whatever result we get, we might round it down to the nearest five minutes. Uh, yeah, shit. All right, let's do the countdown. Except for that we don't have any 100 meter counter here. There is no uh, decimal. So, uh, 995, I guess. 996. 997. We have to go to 983. 998. 9999. Wait, no, 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 nine. Wait, no, 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 nine. There, there, there. <laughs> One thousand. Wait, time. Twelve thirty-seven. Because of this ridiculous traffic, with no lane discipline, I have decided the the dictator has decided to round it down. So it's going to be eleven thirty. Yeah, we just correct for the crazy traffic, man. So yeah, that is, that's it. Eleven thirty. Woo. Well, we're back home. So yeah, uh, how the heck was this run? almost an hour slower than the EC4X. EC4X has similar size. It has the exact same battery, the exact same charging curve, uh, but it was summer. But the consumption you see the EC4X was not that much lower. So my impression is that this, this Astra E is quite efficient, but it's not that big also in size. Um, but I actually don't, uh, maybe, yeah, uh, we had that, that uh, rapid gate session, but after that session, then all the other sessions were okay very consistent at least 
And uh, maybe because it's winter and we have slightly shorter range, then it triggers more charging stops, which also adds to the number of uh, overhead. You know, we have to exit, plug it in, unplug and so on. That could be one explanation. Yeah, but then suddenly we are in the, in, at least in winter run, we are in the 11 and a half hour run. But you see the Cooper Born, that was, okay, it's slightly bigger battery. That one was also done in winter and it also was 11 and a half hours. And up to three. Uh, okay, so we beat some cars, but um, what we have tested now today is that the Astro E can go on a long trip. Even the extreme 1000 kilometer challenge is more like a corner case, but you can also look at the result after 500, 600 kilometers and see how long it takes if you care about that result. Um, but I feel like it's not the fastest car to go on a long trip, but uh, if you just need a station wagon and you don't want to pay too much money, then maybe the Astro E is a good choice. And when it comes to suspension, by the way, some people in livestream ask, how is it? Well, it feels a bit harsh, firm. Uh, I wouldn't say super soft, but maybe that's a good thing. As uh, so you feel some of the harder bumps, uh, some of the bridge, bridge gaps, but uh, it's not to the point where it becomes over uh, hard, like uh, for example, the first generation Model Y. Sound level is also okay, not the best, not the worst. And seats feels good, at least. And space, yeah, uh, okay space in the trunk, but then not that great space in the back seat. So you just have to know the limitation of this car. And if you want to know more, you can check out the interior view and maybe the button box test for those uh, uh, yeah, things about the car. So overall, though, I feel like it's still a good car, um, but I feel like the software is quite outdated in many ways, um, the Stellantis cars. Uh, and also that the fact that this is a front wheel drive, it should have been a rear wheel drive instead, but the platform just doesn't have rear wheel drive uh, in the system. So, so yeah, um, I think that's it. <laughs> I'm just gonna end it there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.